Today, we will add fire to our game. Not just a visual fire, but fire that has an effect in our gameplay. In our game's lore, fire is one of the weaknesses of wisps. It disrupts their energies, making essence dissipate with it. For those of you who are new here, I'm June, and my team and I are working on a reverse RPG game where you play as a wisp who can transform into different monsters with the goal of eliminating humans exploiting resources from your island home. It's a unique reverse RPG game where we play as a monster instead of the usual RPG heroes. If you're interested in following our development, feel free to subscribe to get updates. Let's begin! First, let's start by downloading a fire asset from the Unity Asset Store. We don't really need to make the fire from scratch. There are tons of free assets you can use. This is the one I'm currently using. I'll link this asset in the description below for those of you who are interested in using it. I decided to use this because it has very good details. It has sparks, heat dissipation effects, and good lighting. Let's add this asset to our Torchbearer's torches. Alright, now we have an issue. As you can see, if the torch is tilted sideways, the fire will stay sideways as well, which is not how fire is supposed to behave. So to fix this, we just need to modify the gravity of the particle and have the particles get affected by gravity. So we need to assign a negative value to it to have the particles go up instead of falling to the ground. Next, let's add an effect where the torches hit our skeleton. Let's use this explosion asset from Unity's effects pack. But let's remove the explode effect to tone it down a bit. Let's test it. Alright. Again, explosions doesn't behave this way. So let's add a gravity to it and have it move upwards after exploding. Let's also add lights to it to have it glow as it explodes. Let's test it. Alright, looks great. Next, we will add fire effects to our monster when we're hit, but let's incorporate some gameplay aspects to it. You see, we have different monsters in our game, and we want them to have different resistances when it comes to fire. For example, we want our tree creatures to be the weakest against fire since they're practically made from wood. While the skeleton is fireproof, we will have them more resistant to fire or burn damage. So to translate this to gameplay, we need to make a system that has these aspects. First, we need to make a status effect called Burn. And this status effect will deduct a small fortitude and essence from the monster per second. Let's also add a visual indicator on our player to see that we are burning. Now let's add an aspect that limits how long the fire will last. Let's have it last for 5 seconds. Next, we'll have a system where we can stack the flames, extending the duration of the damage. We'll make the system as the basis for the difference in resistance to burn damage. For example, we'll have the skeleton have 4 max burn, which is represented by the flames you see on the skeleton, while the tree creature will have 8 max burn, making the fire last longer on them. Lastly, we'll incorporate skill resistances to our monsters that will reduce the burn damage taken for both fortitude and essence. For our skeleton, since it's naturally fireproof, let's have its burn damage for fortitude reduced to 50%. Let's make skill nodes that will increase these percentages as we level up our skill tree. Now, let's test the game battling the entire mercenary group with a new fire system added. The only thing missing in our new feature are the sounds. Alex is still finding ways to incorporate them. Over there, something's coming. He's tough. Keep at it. So you can see, the torch bearers now have an edge against us, since fire cannot be guarded. The shield will reduce the hit damage from the torch when guarding, but the burn damage will affect you. By the way, for those of you who want to support us with our marketing efforts, we're already live on Steam and you can already wishlist Wispleg. Wishlisting our game will really help us get a head start on pushing our game on launch date. For those of you who want to support the development of our game, we have a Patreon page to support funding our game's assets. For all of our patrons, thank you so much for the support. We also have a Discord server where people hang out to share ideas. There are some who even volunteered and help out with the assets. You see, one of our goals is to make Wisplight a game that is community driven. I'll link all of these down in the description. In our next devlog, let's talk about spawners and object pooling and how we incorporate them in our game. Till next time.